Hello, I welcome you all in this course on steam and gas power system. Today we will solve a numerical on uh, flow through the nozzles. The statement of the numerical is the nozzles of a 100 kilowatt, ca kilowatt capacity turbine, it means there are number of nozzles, not a single nozzle, there are number of nozzles for a 100 kilowatt capacity turbine uh, uh, have a throat diameter of 0.5 centimeter each. The steam flow rate in turbine is 6 kg per kilowatt hour. The steam enters the nozzle at 40 bar pressure and 30 degree centigrade, 300 degree centigrade temperature. The back pressure is 5 kilopascal. Back pressure means the pressure after expansion in the nozzle. So, that is 5 kilopascal. If the flow through nozzle is isentropic, find the number of nozzles and steam consumption, neglect the velocity of approach, I mean the velocity of steam which is entering the nozzle. If the 10 percent of the isentropic heat drop between throat and exit is wasted, find exit diameter of nozzle and the final condition of steam. Also find overall efficiency of the nozzle. So, there are number of nozzles in this system and uh, initial condition is uh, 300 degree centigrade temperature and 40, 14 bar. So, if we look at uh, 14 bar that is 1400 kilo Pascal, the saturation temperature is 195.04 degree centigrade. It means the steam is superheated while uh, entering the nozzle. So, on a enthalpy entropy diagram, uh, steam is superheated while entering the nozzle. Right. And since the temperature is uh, uh, 300 degree centigrade, so directly from this table 14 bar pressure that is 1400 kilo Pascal pressure and 300 degree centigrade, the enthalpy is 3040.9 kilo joules per kg. So, H1 is 3040.9 kilo joules per kg. Entropy we will be requiring, uh, entropy is 6.9552 kilo joules per kg Kelvin, right. Now, <laughs> pressure ratio P2 by P1. is equal to 2 by n plus 1 n upon n minus 1. This will not give the exit pressure. This will give the pressure at the throat, right. So, P2 by P, achha, for this a superheated vapor n is equal to 1 by 3. So, just by putting the value n is equal to 1 by 3, 2 by 1 plus 1 by 3 raised to power 1 by 3 divided by 0 0.3, we are getting <laughs> and this is P2 by P1 and then P2 is in this case we are getting 7.64 bar or 764 kilo Pascal. That is a pressure at <laughs> the throat, right. And temperature. Now, this 764 kilo Pascal, let us look at entropy. 764, I have taken the properties of because 764 kilo Pascal you will not find from the steam table. So, what I have done, I have taken properties at 600 kilo Pascal, properties at uh, uh, 800 kilo Pascal and by linear interpolation, I have calculated the properties at 764 kilo Pascal. So, if you have a steam table with you, this exercise shall also be done by you in order to find the, the properties at 6, 764 kilo Pascal. At 764 kilo Pascal, if the vapor is saturated, entropy is 6.679. Here it is 6.955, it means the vapor is superheated because when there is a isentropic expansion from state 1 to state 2, right. In this case, the entropy is going to remain constant. 
So, S 2 has to be 6.9552 kilo joules per kg Kelvin. Now, if you look at the superheated property of uh, steam at uh, 764 kilo Pascal, uh, so in that case 6.955. So, this entropy will lie between this 200 degree centigrade and 250 degree centigrade. Right? For 200 degree centigrade, 200 degree centigrade or we will write S 200. S 200 is equal to uh, how much 6.844 6 kilo joules per kg Kelvin and entropy at 250 is 7.065818 kilo joules per kg Kelvin. And our entropy S2 is lying between these two. So, we will do the linear interpolation of temperature in order to find the temperature of the vapor, it is going to be 200 plus this S2 minus S200 divided by S250 minus S200 multiplied by 250 minus 200. Now, these values S 2 will take from here S 200 or entropy at 200 from here and entropy at 250 from here. And while this linear interpolation we are getting temperature as 224.98 degree centigrade. So, T 2 is 224.98 degree centigrade. In similar fashion, we can find other properties also. Other properties means suppose I want to have enthalpy H 2. So, enthalpy at 2 is again enthalpy at 200 plus enthalpy uh, uh, enthalpy at 200 enthalpy at 250 minus enthalpy at 200 divided by uh, 250 minus 200, this is temperature multiplied by uh, 224.98 minus 200. So, this is a linear again linear interpolation of the uh, enthalpies. Enthalpy at 250 can be taken from here at 2 it is 2951 2951.7 kilo joules per kg and enthalpy at 200 is equal to enthalpy at 200 is equal to 2632 uh, oh no enthalpy at 200 yes it is 2841 2841.7 kilo joules per kg. This we have taken from the interpolated uh, table. Uh, so, now putting these values H 200 here and H 250 and 200 here, we will get the value of H 2 S 2896.6 kilo joules per kg. In similar fashion, we can find the specific volume at 2 also and that is 0 0.2943 meter cube per kg. Again for a specific volume again a specific volume at 200 plus a specific volume at 250 minus a specific volume at 200 divided by 250 minus 200 multiplied by 224.98 minus 200. So, this is a linear interpolation and this will give the value as, uh, as 0.2943 meter cube per kg right. So, in such case when the when the when the steam remains in the superheated zone all the values are calculated by taking cross interpolation of the values. Now, 
entropy is remaining constant it is further expanded to 5 kilo Pascal this is state 3 p 3 p 3 is 5 kilo Pascal if you look, look at the statement of the problem the pressure the back pressure is 5 kilo Pascal right at 5 kilo Pascal the entropy is 6.9552 same so s 3 is equal to s 1 and saturated vapor when it is at 5 kilo Pascal the entropy is 8.3938 it means the vapor is no longer superheated it is wet vapor having certain quality so s3 is equal to s1 and s1 is 6.9552 this is s1 is equal to sf 3 plus x s s f g 3. So, s f 3 is 0 0.4762 plus x multiplied by 7.9176. Now, from here because this is 6.9552 from here we will get the value of x and the value of x is x 3 is in this case 0 0.8183. Now, once we have the value of x 3 we can find the value of h 3 also h 3 is h f 3 plus x 3 h f g 3 right. Now, h f 3 is the pressure of the liquid at 5 kilo Pascal and it is going to be 137.75 multiplied by 0 0.8183 that is the quality of vapor multiplied by this is plus multiplied by latent heat of vaporization that is 2422.95. and this will give the value of H 3 as 2120.4 kilo joules per kg and volume of the vapor at 3 volume of the vapor at 3 will be volume of the vapor at 3 will be X 3 and V S 3 and this will give because X 3 is already we know 0 0.8183 and V S 3 we can take from here it is uh, 28.185 28.185 meter cube per kg. So, multiplying these two we will be getting volume of vapor and that is 23.064 meter cube per kg. Now, we have all the properties right these properties we have derived from steam table right and the steam table also at a particular pressure then we calculated the pressure 764 by this equation for optimum pressure ratio and from 764 for all the properties at this pressure we have taken properties at uh, 600 kilo Pascal we have pro taken properties of superheated steam at 800 kilo Pascal these properties at these two pressures of steam we have calculated the properties of superheated steam at 764 kilo Pascal again once we have found the temperature of steam that is uh, 224.98 degree centigrade we have done uh, interpolations and we have found the value of different properties of the steam at all 1 2 3 all uh, at all the states 1 and 2 and 3. So, this is through steam table if we use the Mollier diagram the job becomes very simple when we use the Mollier diagram in a Mollier diagram or Mollier chart it is a chart between enthalpy and entropy it is also known as enthalpy entropy diagram in Mollier diagram there is a 
line when such vapor is saturated this is known as saturation line x is equal to 1 right in bollier diagram there are lines which are inclined these lines are known as constant pressure lines there are certain lines which are constant volume lines volume is equal to constant right and these lines quality wise also this is the line for x is equal to 1 and you will find another line x is equal to 0 0.9 then you find another line x is equal to 0 0.8 and so on now in this diagram suppose you want to take the value suppose you have initially you have pressure and temperature right so there are having constant temperature lines also the molier diagram is having constant temperature lines also like this temperature is equal to constant so now i have constant temperature line i have constant pressure line so immediately i can locate suppose i know the temperature and i know the pressure i can immediately locate the point right so state 1 can be easily located on the molded chart when state 1 is located you can directly take enthalpy you don't have to do the interpretation in the uh, steam table immediately you can take the value of h1 right process is isentropic when the process is isentropic it means entropy is remaining constant it is going to be a vertical line 3 right now p2 is known to me now p2 is 764 so immediately i will see the 764 pressure line and when this pressure line constant pressure line when this is cutting this vertical line this is state 2 so state 1 state 2 so state 2 h2 can be taken from here right and at state 2 we can find everything specific volume and temperature right further expansion is taking place we are getting attaining state 3 when we are attaining state 3 immediately we can take quality of vapor from here where this vertical line is cutting this constant entropy line sorry con constant quality line and at the same diagram we can find the value of h3 and specific volume and everything so for such type of issues i mean for uh, the problems related with the nozzles the use of molier diagram is quite convenient but the problem in the molier diagram is we don't get accurate values the accuracy is a little problem when we solve the numericals that is why in order to have high accuracy we go for interpretation in steam table but for all practical purpose purposes this molier diagram is sufficient to find the properties at different states 1 2 and 3 now velocity velocity at state 2 c2 c2 is going to be 2000 multiplied by h1 minus h2 now i'll, I'll, I'll rub, rub this off h1 minus h2 and under root and this is equal to under root 200 sorry 2000 multiplied by h1 is 3040.9 and h2 is 2896 6 and this will give the value of c2 as 537.2 meter per second so we can write somewhere here c2 is equal to 537.2 meters per second this is the velocity of steam at state 2 right now throat dia we have already 
assumed it is 0 0.5. So, d is 0 0.05 sorry 0 0.5 not 0 0 0.5 centimeter is it so or it is different throw time 0 0.5 centimeter okay. 0 0.5 centimeter area we can easily find pi by 4 d square is equal to pi by 4 into 0 0.5 square is equal to 0 0.19635 centimeter square. So, so A2 is 0 0.19635 centimeter square. Now, at state 2 velocity is known, area is known and specific volume is known. We can easily find the mass flow rate per nozzle. Mass flow rate per nozzle is m is equal to a 2 c 2 by v 2 is equal to 0 0.19635 that is area velocity is 537 by 0 0.2 divided by specific volume it is 0 0.2943. 0 0.2943 and this will give the mass flow rate as 0 0.035841 kg per second. So, mass flow rate is uh, 0 0.035841 kg per second and mass flow rate is going to remain constant from inlet to exit. This is mass flow rate per nozzle and uh, steam consumption is in this case is how much 6 kg per kilowatt hour 6 kg per kilowatt hour this is the steam consumption rate it means 6 into 100 because plant capacity is 100 right and uh, per hour it is 3600 that will give kg per second this much of steam is required. So, if we just cancel it out it is 1 by 6 kg per second this is the total mass flow rate of steam per nozzle mass flow rate is this much so number of nozzles is going to be total mass flow rate divided by mass flow rate per nozzle total mass flow rate is 1 by 6 kg per second here is 0 0.35841 and that is going to be equal to 4.65 number of nozzle is 4.65 but we cannot have 4.65 nozzles it has to be an integer either 4 or 5. then we will have to take 5 nozzles and 5 nozzles if we are taking then for 5 nozzles we will have to correct the mass flow rate. So, mass actual mass flow rate will come around we can do one, 2 things either we increase the mass flow rate same same type of nozzle or we change the diameter of the nozzle right because changing diameter nozzle is difficult. So, what we can do we can increase the mass flow rate of the steam and that can be equal to 5 into 0 0.03581 and that is equal to actual mass is this is the actual mass consumption of steam. Another way is we change the diameter of the nozzle right while designing the nozzle we change the diameter of the nozzle keeping the same mass flow rate. Now, next part of this numerical is if 10 percent of the isentropic heat drop between throat and exit is wasted find the exit diameter of nozzle. Now, from 2 to 3 10 percent of the heat is wasted right. So, for 10 percent wastage of the heat it means the total heat drop in the process is 
total heat drop in the process is delta H is H1 uh, minus H2, H1 minus H2, right, plus 90 percent of H2 minus H3, right. This will give, now we can write H1 minus H2, 3040.9 and H2 is 2896.6 and 90 percent of remaining enthalpy drop that is again H2 2896.6 minus 2120.4 and this will give the enthalpy drop as 842.88 kilojoules per kg and this is H1 minus H3 dash. So, H3 dash is going to be equal to 3040.9 minus 842.88 and that is going to be equal to 21982. So, H3 dash is equal to 2198.02 kilo joules per kg, right. So, find the diameter of the nozzle and the final condition, okay. Now, we have H3 dash that is the enthalpy of the fluid leaving the no nozzle. Once we have the value of H3 dash, we can find the quality of the vapor because this pressure is 5 kilo Pascal. So, at 5 kilo, kilo Pascal, the enthalpy is 2198.02 is equal to H f, H f is 137.75 kilo joules per kg and latent heat is 2560.7, no 2422.95 x 2422.95. From here, we will get the value of x 3. This is x, sorry, here we will write x 3 and that is going to be equal to 0 0.85. Once we have parity state 3, we can find the velocity. The C 3 is under root 2000 h 1 minus h 3 dash. Right. And this C 3 we are getting C 3 we are getting 1298.4 meter per second. How we are getting? Just we are putting the value of H 1 that is 3040.9 and H 3 dash it is 2198.02. That is how we are getting the value. Now, we have to find the area 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 of exit velocity now velocity is with us specific volume with us and uh, uh, mass flow rate is constant right so area area 3 a 3 a 3 is m v 3 dash or v 3 or v 3 v 3 dash and this is v 3 dash and c 3 dash. Now, v 3 dash is x multiplied by v 3, v 3 is how much? Uh, 28.185, 28.185 multiplied by the quality will give v 3 dash. So, now here mass flow rate is 0 0.035. 841 into 23.96 divided by 1298.4 and this will give the area as 6.61 into 10 to power minus 4 meter square. And this area is pi by 4 d square 
and from here we can find the value of d and the exit area or d3 is uh, 2.9 centimeter. Simply we will just multiply this by 4 divided by pi, we will take the under root, we will find the area in meters, multiply by 100, you will get the area, oh sorry, we will get the diameter in meters and then multiply it by 100, you will get diameter in centimeters, right. Now, the last thing remaining is efficiency of the nozzle. As I stated earlier, the efficiency of the nozzle is, this is 3 dash, efficiency of the nozzle is H 1 minus H 3 dash divided by H 1 minus H 3. So, we will take the value of H 1 and H 3 dash, H 3 0, 4 0 0.9 minus H 3 dash is 2198.02 divided by 3040.9 and H 3 is 2120.4 and this gives the efficiency as 0 0.9157 or 91.6 percent. That is all for today. Thank you very much.